I'm Soledad O'Brien. Welcome to Matter of Fact. America's infrastructure is crumbling. The numbers are staggering. 54,000 bridges deemed structurally deficient. Dams, levees, railways all get a D-plus from the American Society of Civil Engineers. The president wants to invest at least $1.5 trillion to rebuild our infrastructure. But the ASCE says that's not enough and estimates the project needs an investment of $4.6 trillion. Fixing the nation's decaying infrastructure is a project that sounds like it would be ripe for bipartisan deal making, but can it still get caught in congressional gridlock? One question that everybody has is who's gonna pay for it? Republican Representative Lloyd Smucker of Pennsylvania, Democratic Representative Elizabeth Esty of Connecticut are on the Transportation Committee and also part of the Problem Solvers Caucus working on solutions to restore our infrastructure. It's so nice to have you both uh, joining me. So Problem Solvers Caucus has put out policy recommendations. You've called the situation dire. Were you encouraged by what you heard from the president specifically about infrastructure when he was talking the other day in the State of the Union address. I think all of us are glad to hear more, but Congress and the president's not, has not talked about fixing the baseline. And I think that's what our group is really proud of the work we've done over four months with a hundred different groups because the baseline funding needs to be fixed. And the American people need confidence that if they're gonna see increases in fees they want to see it go into the roads, into the bridges, into the airports, and that's our job in Congress. But you to can't fix cut that. your way you to can't. fixing infrastructure. You can't tax your way into fixing infrastructure, can you? Clearly, we, we need, we're going to need to see additional revenue. Solving this is a top priority of the president, of the administration, of the committee, on which, of which we're both a member of the uh, Transportation Infrastructure Committee. And, and the public is ready to support it. People understand infrastructure is a core function of government, and they understand when they're impacted by, by uh, roads and highways that aren't up to, up to, uh, up to par. Uh, for instance, I had in my district years ago, uh, and in fact, in other areas of Pennsylvania as well, there have been uh, bridges more recently that literally couldn't take the weight of a school bus. So what they would do is, if the bus was full of kids, they would drop the kids off at one, on one side of the bridge, uh, and then either the bus has to drive around or another bus picks up the kids after they walk across the bridge. So, so I, the kids years walk ago, the, uh, yes. the unsafe bridge, the bus can't, it's too heavy. Yeah, it's too, too heavy, heavy too, with the kids on board. Yeah, too heavy with the kids Which on board. Yes, sounds yes, really... Yes. It's not government doing its job. So then do you feel good about the $1.5 trillion, which is really $200 mil, uh, billion dollars leveraged, or do you think it's just not enough? Well, I think it helps. I think of it as sort of the bells and whistles. These are additional projects, but it doesn't address the baseline. So I know, you know projects in my area, it's generally uh, there's several sources of funding. Federal government is a key component, uh, and then there's often a state component and even a local uh, component as well. So, so by, by leveraging that, we're able to get more dollars into pr but uh, that projects. that shoves a lot of the costs now onto the states, and I would say states will be the first to you guys know, having spent time, uh, that states would say, we do not have these kinds of dollars to do these kinds of projects. And now we're in this cyclical mode of, sure, we all agree, but actually there's no real money to make this happen. We got to this point by years, decades of underinvestment. And you know, you can't build half a Hoover Dam. You just can't. And we've been trying to get by on the equivalent of duct tape. And I love duct tape, but we're way beyond that at this point. I've got a major highway in my district, I-84, and people who are coming from New York and New Jersey and heading up to New England sometimes cut right across my district on that. The Mix Master, which is named because it kind of looks like a mess, you know, in Waterbury, Connecticut, underneath that, if you look up, you can look up through the decking. You can see crumbling, you know, rusting rebar, and that has got to be fixed. And that's going to take real money. That's not about financing from Wall Street. There's been a lot of work going on uh, to prepare for an administration plan that we expect to see rolled out in the next uh, few weeks. The uh, committees have been working on this as well. And then, of course, the problem solvers proposal mm -hmm. is the result of a lot of work uh, that, that has been done as well. How come every congressperson is not a problem solver? I mean, shouldn't every single member of Congress well, be? Well, I think I think this group, it's a bipartisan group. I think there's 24 Democrats, 24, 24, 24. Republicans mm -hmm. now. 
Uh, and we understand that there are some major problems facing the country. Infrastructure is one of them. They impact all of us. And so we have to find ways to work together to find solutions. And that's, that's the goal of this group. I think we've got about two months before mm -hmm. the silly season of primaries takes over before the midterms. And we need this. The American public knows this. So it's time right. with, for Congress right. to get with the program and get this done for the country. Congresswoman Esty, nice to have you. Congressman Smucker, thank you so much for joining us. Good to be here. Appreciate it. You bet.